Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insights through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Jeanette Meyer, who is a systems engineering graduate with extensive experience in the IT SAP world. She also founded a social enterprise in 2012 that evolved into the positive impact movement by 2018. She holds a doctorate of philosophy in conscious centered living and has a bachelor's and master's degree in metaphysical science. Jeanette's vision encompasses true leadership through love, uniqueness, and co-creation, which she promotes through the Leadership Circle for the New Earth. This initiative empowers individuals to be their own leaders, fostering a society of mutual growth and empowerment. She also hosts the Leadership Circle podcast, sharing insights in authentic leadership and personal transformation. We have so much to dive into today, Jeanette. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here and so honored. I thank you so much. (laughs) Absolutely. It is my honor. We really do have a lot to talk about today. So I'm going to ask you my first question. Before we dive into your professional journey, if you could describe your life to this point in one word, what would that word be? Expansion. Expansion. Tell us more. Expansion, because growing and expansion, we are here and everyone has come here to to grow and expand. What inspired you to transition from a systems engineering background to founding the positive impact movement? Tell us more about that. I think it's more um, about uh, the experiences in my life. No, I did uh, a big change in 2004. I changed my life. I, I moved from New York to Barcelona, Spain, because I wanted to know myself. I wanted to know who I was. And that experience, I had to cut many things, letting go of many things. And uh, I learned that if you want to change something, start with yourself. While I was here in Barcelona, working in IT, I was feeling I wanted to do something for others. I wanted to, to really change things. No? So I started this uh, social enterprise in 2012, giving visibility to others. But that evolved into the positive impact movement because I believe that if you are your own change, you change society so you positively impact. So there was a physical move There was a mental transition, which engaged something in you to want to change somehow, to change your profession, to change where you were personally in your life. So you evolved this journey of positive impact, the positive impact movement. Since its inception, how has it evolved? What does it look like from 2012 to today? So 2012, I started as a social entrepreneur with a social enterprise, and I learned I wasn't a social entrepreneur. I was someone that I now call true leader, no? someone that really creates a project based on my experience no? to empower others, to inspire others. I wasn't able to create any solution to any problem fixed solution. I wasn't able to create a fixed business because I was constantly evolving. I was evolving, so was my project. And so that's why I created a change. I moved it from this social enterprise you today into the positive impact movement because I wanted for others to know that it's okay to continue evolving the project because the most important thing behind the project is the person and the person always evolves and expands. So that's the project. So how do you guide individuals or how do you support individuals to uncover or tap into their uniqueness and where they are with their leadership power? I just listen to them. I listen to them through the heart. So when I'm with them, 
in the heart, I'm in the now. So I'm really listening and I'm placing questions that will serve them, not me in my curiosity, to serve them so that they can see themselves. When someone explains and there's someone else that is really, truly listening, people listen to themselves and discover things, discover things they haven't seen because they are able to really explain it in detail and with love, no? they are heard. And when you do that, also something grows in them. The seed of leadership, which is the seed of being who you really are. And it's okay to be who you really are. Well, I love that because it kind of reminds me of, as we started out in psychology, Freud used to do something called free association. And the person could just say whatever comes out of their mind, their mouth. And he was just listening to how that person evolved to help that person better understand their lived experience, where they were, what was going on in their subconscious. So that listening component, which I call understanding somebody's lived experience or their phenomenology, Mm -hmm. really helps people with their reflection points. It's like those aha moments. And what either is pushing them forward towards a purpose or something that might be blocking Mm -hmm. that purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. So what does it mean to you when we say the word co-creation? How Mm -hmm. do you explain that? And how does it manifest in your work with the leadership circle? So co-creation is really comes from the being. I want to explain co-creation. I go to collaboration to explain it better. So collaboration for me comes from the doing. When I collaborate with someone, I have a goal that is set up that we together go into the goal and we do anything possible so that the goal is accomplished. Co-creation comes from the being, from the now, in wholeness. I'm here with you. I'm co-creating with you. You are in your wholeness. You and I create based on what's happening now and we get somewhere, which we don't know now. Co-creation is really expansive. Co-creation, it's very powerful because you don't know the outcome. You are just now choosing in every moment together and getting it somewhere that will be much, much bigger and better than anything you could have collaborated for. And in collaboration, another thing is that collaboration, since you want to go into a goal, you are giving up certain things of yourself because you want to get to a goal. So you have to adjust. In co-creation, you are you all the time. You don't adjust. Whatever is co-created, it's in respect and in value of yourself and the other person. So there is a distinct difference between collaboration and co-creation. Yes. And there is a different feeling behind that as well. So as you go through co-creation with somebody in their being, where they are now, in their lived experience, do you ever find that people during that co-creation, even not giving up something of themselves to reach a goal, how do they make that shift of understanding what it means to be a co-creator? Because a lot of us have been conditioned to think about collaboration or goal setting. I mean, that's the whole business structure, right? Mm -hmm. Let's think about a mission. Let's think about our goals. Let's think about our strategy. So how do we make the shift to think about how we're co-creating versus collaborating? Yes, it has to do a lot with trust. Trust in yourself, trust in the process, trust in your heart. One important thing is really to be in your heart and not in the mind. Mm. So mm-hmm. when you are in your heart, you are trusting and you are acting based on what you feel, the sensations and the guidance, let's say, from the heart. You're not blocking or limiting anything with the mind. So you're really trusting that what you're choosing will take you somewhere very special. Yeah. And it is interesting and it's very special. Yet I see people that you've probably worked with somehow bringing collaboration into connection with Mm co-creation. So there might be that balance between, well, I don't necessarily have to give this much to get where I want to be while I'm still maintaining that authenticity, that Mm -hmm. transparency, 
that energy? I think that anytime you are working towards something, mm -hmm. that it's not a vision. No? Because for me, I have the vision of the new earth, for mm -hmm. instance. And so for me, I co-create with others for the new earth. But I don't know what the new earth is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I trust that when I co-create with others, the new mm -hmm. earth will be showing itself. But I don't have a limitation of how the new earth has to look like. Right. You know? Yes. That's the beauty of co-creation is the unknown. It's the trust of what you ambition to go. So you have a vision. That's good. But you don't have a goal, an objective that it's mental, not that it has certain specifications. Well, and that's interesting that you say that because it doesn't have certain specifications or limitations. So you're not then seeking out an end result. Yes. You're letting it evolve. Yes. So it's a natural evolution. Yes. Whatever that is. So tell me more about this concept of new earth. Earth is place where we really are in freedom to be who we are and create what we love, where we are able to be unique, mm -hmm. you know, because when we are who we are, really, we are unique, we are authentic. Yeah. And when we are like that, co-creation is very natural. Co-creation comes from your being, from who you are. So whenever you are in relationship with people, with things, it will be in co-creation because it will be from the heart. It will be from the now. That's for me the new earth. So you're cultivating this community of co-creators who are open to the idea of how it evolves it evolves. There's no expectations. There's no limitations. It's a exploration, experiencing and practicing mm. to be there in the now. Yeah. It takes practice and practice and practice to be in the now. So it's really a, what I love to explore with people for them to experience what it really is to be in the heart. So it's practice, practice, practice. And that's what I'm cultivating through the yeah. podcast and through myself. I'm practicing, you know, to be in the heart all the time, even in IT, wherever I am, because I am the example of what I want to see in the world. So I am the change I want to see in the world. I'm not changing other ones. I want them to experience through their own way of experiencing and not with steps or something. No, because that's limitation. It's for them to experience, to be in their heart and to be unique and to co-create that it's expansive and it's uh, so beautiful and so empowering. Yeah, absolutely. I do see that it would be practice because a lot of times we have these exterior thoughts, yes. things that are happening in our lives that could be distractions to being in the now. So how is it when you work with somebody or you're creating the leadership circle, as you said, you're a model and somebody wants to be where you're at and yet they've got these things that are interfering with them being present. How do you help them really, I don't want to say block out, but kind of just be there now and not have these conditions? One important thing in life is really observation. No? Observation of, of your thoughts, observation of your actions, observation of your triggers, observations of your patterns. So it's really about that. So that once you observe them, you recognize them, then you are able to let them go. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Again, exploration, experiencing, practicing. <laughs> but it's about this awareness, to be in awareness all the time. To be in awareness how the external is impacting you and how you are impacting the external. But without judgment. So yeah. no mind, no, no judgment. It's really understanding and seeing so that you are able to discover more about yourself and, and more about certain things you do, not because of you, but because of the outside, for instance. Yeah. So it's really sharing because we learn through relationships, through the sharing, not through conversations, through seeing what we really are thinking, feeling, creating, doing. It's all about this observation. Right. Thank you for that. So tell me a little bit more about the principles of conscious center living and how they influence your approach to leadership. This freedom to be who you are and create what you love, to really live from the inside out. So really from the heart to the world, 
to know that nothing happens when you do that, no? Because we have many programs, we have been taught to fear. That's why we block ourselves so much. That's why we don't express certain things. But when you do it from the heart, nothing is right, nothing is wrong. It's perfectly imperfect. So it's very liberating. It's about really being free to be who you are and respect and value and love of yourself and everyone else. So tell us, as you have evolved through your journey and you have created the shift or pattern for yourself from a very systematic approach, systems engineering, Mm -hmm. to being present, letting go, not anticipating an end result. That's a big deal. That's a lot of, yeah, right. I mean, (laughs) I think we continue to self-actualize, hopefully, until we're gone. (laughs) So (laughs) as long as you're open to learning. Yes. You do this through something you create, your leadership circle. You also do this through your podcast, the Leadership Circle podcast. You've created these things to help others and model for others what you do, how to live from the heart, the true self, not expect an outcome, break these patterns of conditioning and the systems of thinking and feeling so you can be your true self. Tell us more about these things that you have created, such as the Leadership Circle podcast and your Leadership Circle for the New Earth. But the Leadership Circle is still just a digest. People that are there, the majority are co-creators with me from the Leadership Circle podcast. Gotcha. Because for now, I said, okay, I start with the Leadership Circle podcast Because there, I'm really showing what it is to experience this being in the heart, to be truly you, this co-creation, and how powerful it is and how inspiring it is with people who are listening. And I see that. It's so beautiful because people listen to it and it inspires them. And I get beautiful notes, beautiful messages saying how much they have been inspired, or even the ones that are in the leadership circle, co-creating with me, what they have felt that has made them change something in their life, yeah. just with one conversation in which we are co-creating. Yeah. So um, this is where I am now, and I know it will evolve. I just don't know how and mm-hmm. what, but I know and I trust that it's evolving where it has to evolve. So like today, I'm very grateful for your question because it shows me a possible way <laughs> of going. But this is where I am now, you know, this co-creating of conversation. I, before I had the leadership circle, I had a community in the Positive Impact Movement, a community in which we explored experience and practice to be in conversations, to be in the heart and to co-create programs where we didn't know what the outcome was going to be, just the topics. It had several sessions, different people in each session, and they were co-creating based on the outcome of the other session. So they had just one week to prepare it, but also co-create with the participants. And the outcome was always so beautiful and so amazing and not even imaginable what we would have thought at the beginning. And um, while I closed the community, because for me, I didn't want walls in a movement. So I said, movement must be open. And that's why I started Leadership Circle and then Leadership Circle podcast. Leadership Circle to write at the beginning and the podcast to show through experience, because it's very difficult to explain something if you don't experience, If to explain, to be in the heart, to explain what uniqueness is, co-creation, to be open-hearted, all the things are very difficult to experience if you want to understand if you don't experience them yourself. Very true. Well, we have covered so much here. And thank you so much, Jeanette, for being with me as we come to the close of the interview. My last question is, if you were to give the listeners just one tip about how one can be their own leader and foster a society of mutual growth and empowerment, what would that be? Be who you are. Don't be in fear. Be who you are. Express your beautiful, perfectly imperfect being because that's amazing and so, so expansive. And you have the potential. You have the potential. You are limitless. We all are. Love the tip. Thank you, Jeanette, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really honored. Thank you so much.
It is a pleasure. You can follow Jeanette Meyer on LinkedIn and YouTube at Jeanette Meyer on Instagram at leadership.circle and at JeanetteMeyer.com. You can also catch her podcast, Leadership Circle, on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.